For a long time now, I've thought about making a harmonic drive that uses timing builds as the flex spline. I recently got this in the mail. This is a specialized timing belt that is 15 millimeters tall. It has 50 teeth, each of which is three millimeters wide. If you're unaware, a harmonic drive is a gear reduction system. It's used to reduce the RPMs and increase the torque of a motor output. A harmonic drive specifically is one of the best gear reduction systems out there. It's extremely compact, generally pretty easy to make, it's on the cheaper side of things, and it doesn't require incredibly tight tolerances. Harmonic drives have become nearly standard for robotic arm systems, and I'd love to build a robotic arm, so I thought I'd better start with a harmonic drive. So I got this belt, I went ahead and designed a test harmonic drive that would go on this NEMA 17 84 ounce inch motor. The harmonic drive that I designed doesn't have any mounting points, so it couldn't actually be used for a robotic arm. It's just a test, just to see if I can get that gear reduction with a reasonable torque. The design is mostly 3D printed. The pieces start with this belt drive, of course. This is the bottom of the harmonic drive. This is the top. I have four M3 screws, two of which will be used to mount the harmonic drive to the motor and the other two will be used for the mechanism. These two are six millimeters long, and these two are 18 millimeters long. I have this internal bar, which will go on the shaft of the motor. I have these four bearings, each of which have a three millimeter bore, 10 millimeter outer diameter, and four millimeter height. Then I have this one larger bearing. It has a five millimeter bore, 16 millimeter diameter, and five millimeter height. I have a couple of these M3 lock nuts. I've ground them down a little bit in order to give me a little bit of clearance. I 3D printed four of these small three millimeter washers. And finally, one five millimeter washer. So I've got all the pieces. Most of these pieces are their second or third iterations. I've already done some playing with this and some tests, but now I'm ready to do the final assembly for this rudimentary harmonic drive. The first thing that I need to do is to mount this bottom piece to the motor. I will use these two M3 by six millimeter screws to fix the piece onto the motor. I ground down the heads of these screws in order to give me a little more clearance for the internal mechanism that I'll be making in a second. This bottom piece is an internally facing gear. It has 52 teeth and it also has a lip on the inside of it. The belt will rest on top of that lip and it fits into here. You may remember that the belt has 50 teeth, which is two less than the external gear. So what will happen is this belt will be pushed around and then each time the motor makes a rotation, the belt will have shifted over two teeth worth. So in the end, this harmonic drive should be a 26 to one gear reduction. You also may have noticed that there's four mounting holes in here. I'm only using two for now. It's definitely secure enough. So now I need to make the internal mechanism. Two bearings will mount on either side of the bar and on the top and the bottom. So first I'll take one of these 18 millimeter long screws, put a bearing on it, put a washer on it, then it'll go through the holes on the ends of the internal bar, then another washer, one more bearing, and then I'll put a lock nut on the end. It's not vital that this would be a lock nut, although they are generally much better than standard nuts when holding bearings in place. So you can get a very secure linkage. So this assembly is secure and the bearings are still free to rotate. And now I'll do the same for the other side. All four bearings are now mounted to the internal bar and all of them are free to rotate, which is good. If one of them weren't free to rotate, I would have loosened the bolt just enough so that it could. And now I can mount this onto the motor shaft. 
I designed this so that the bottom of these bearings should be able to press against the lip that's on the inside of the gear. So this is what the assembly looks like so far. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the motor so you can see the rotation. It's kind of mesmerizing. I can also go ahead and put the belt, which is acting as a flex spline, on the inside of here. It should fit right in without too much space to wiggle around. It's important to make sure that there's an equal number of teeth on either side of it. So if one side looks larger than the other side, I would need to shift the flex spline over a tooth or so. So now, although you can't really see it, the flex spline is slowly rotating around, or relatively slowly. I can actually stick a small piece of tape on the, on the belt and you'll be able to see that rotation. So now you can see that the belt is actually rotating. And this is exactly what we want. I'm now gonna put this five millimeter washer on the top of it. This is supposed to be a separation between the internal bar and the bearing that will go around it. And then after that, I'm gonna pop this larger bearing into the center of the top piece. It's not perfectly level, but it doesn't matter since this is only a test. So I can now go ahead and slide this on the top of it. This can be a little difficult to get it lined up properly. So like I said earlier, this is only a test. So this top piece is free to just be pulled off. If this were for a real robotic arm or something like that, I'd have a large bearing to go around the full thing, which both pieces would press into so that everything remained totally rigid. But this isn't going into anything like that, so I don't need it. So now if I turn on the motor, the rotation of the flex spline should be translated to the rotation of the top piece here. And that's exactly what happens. So the output is spinning much slower than the input, which is exactly what we want. And I do have to keep this held on here with my finger, otherwise it would just pop right off. There's a little bit of noise, which I think is from some of the screws rubbing in here, but I can remedy that in future designs. Unfortunately, I can stop this with my fingers, which I shouldn't be able to had the system worked perfectly. It's very strong. There is a lot of torque coming out of this thing. I'm trying to stop it with my fingers and I cannot easily. I am able to delay the rotation though if I press hard enough. It is decently strong though. So the reason that I still am capable of moving it, even though it should have far too high torque that I could stop it with my hand, is because the belt on the inside is slipping. I believe that I can fix this pretty easily. If I stretch this flex spine, you can see that there's a little bit of a gap in between the bearing and the, uh, the timing belt. This should not be there. If I made a slightly longer internal bar, then the bearing should be pressed right up against the flex spline and it should have no room to move like this. If I did that, the belt would not be able to skip on the internal gears here and it would be able to truly output the maximum torque that it is predicted to. While the system is already not at all back drivable and has no slop whatsoever, which is great. So overall, this test is definitely a success. I really enjoy putting together these small mechanisms like the internal bar here. So making a harmonic drive is very fun, especially since it's been something that I've been meaning to do for a long time. This little mini project has been very inspiring. And I'm definitely seriously considering building a robotic arm, potentially with these motors, maybe with NEMA 23s, maybe even some traditional BLDC motors. But I would very much like to take this system farther and make a full robot out of it. Overall, I'm very happy with this proof of concept and I am very excited to expand upon it. That's all I have for now. Bye.